Hello everyone, Mrs. Bauer here. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about using context clues in regards to a whole passage of text. You will see a page in your packet for week seven, day four, called Context Clues Day Four. It has a passage called Ducks and Geese on it. The passage is to the right. The directions are to below it. And there are some boxes for you to fill in some information and then some lines for you to write out in a complete sentence for your answer. So for this page, we will be using context clues to make inferences to answer questions about a passage. Hmm, what's an inference? Well, an inference is what you see in the text, including the text features and any illustrations on the page, plus what you already know about the topic. And when you put those two things together and think about them together, you have made an inference. So let's read over the directions. The directions below the picture of the ducks and the geese says this, read the passage. Use the boxes below to plan your answer to the following question. Then write your answer on the lines using complete sentences. Our focus question is this, do ducks and geese like water? Why or why not? I bet you already have a lot of ideas in your heads about ducks and geese. We will need to use those, but we also have to use the words that the text is telling us. Maybe this text is trying to prove to us that ducks and geese do not like water. Let's read to see. Step one, read the passage. And you're going to be thinking our purpose for reading is to decide if ducks and geese like water or do they not like water. Okay, so the title is above the picture. It says ducks and geese. Should we skip the picture? Absolutely not. We need to study it for clues. Clues in the picture will help us figure out our answer. Let's read the words. Ducks and geese have wings. They also have feathers. Ducks and geese swim in lakes. They put their heads under the water. Then they grab plants below with their beaks. They live in many places. Do they live near you? Now, we can refer back to this passage when we think about finding clues. So we're going to think about our question. Do ducks and geese like water? Where in this passage are there words that give us clues to help us make our decision? Well, I see swim in lakes. I see heads under the water, and I see crab plants below, plus the entire picture. We're going to think about all of those things. To keep our thoughts organized, we're going to add those thoughts to the graphic organizer. At the very top, that wants you to place all of the things from the passage that you've seen. So you could fill in there, swim in lakes, their heads under, they grab plants below, and you can also add something in there that reminds you that you see ducks and geese in the water in that photograph. Now what do you know already? Well if we think about those things, if you didn't know anything about ducks, you can still make some inferences based on what you've read. I know I have some ducks that live near me, I see them in the water all the time. We also saw that in the photograph. We could put in there what you know. You know ducks are near water a lot. If you don't know anything about ducks or you haven't seen ducks in the wild, the passage gives us some clues. They grab plants below. Their food source is at the water. They stick their heads under there so that they can eat the plants and bugs below. They put their heads under. If you did not like water, would you put your head under water? If you did not like water, 
Would you even go near water? Hmm, they're using their beaks, they're putting their heads under, they're swimming in it. I'm coming to a conclusion. My inference is going to be that yes, ducks and geese like water. So after you have your boxes filled in to organize your thoughts, you'll use those boxes to form your sentences. You'll start at the top and go to the bottom. You will put your conclusion first. Let's start. Our question says, do ducks and geese like water? Why or why not? I remember from writing class that a good writer hooks their reader with some interesting words. Hmm, some interesting words from that passage and that picture. I'm going to choose splash, splash. That will catch the reader's attention. I'm going to then state my answer. It says, do ducks and geese like water? I need to repeat some of those words in my answer. I'm going to write, I know ducks and geese like water. Then I'm going to give at least one reason. I've listed all of the reasons. For your purposes at home, you will probably only have enough space to choose one good reason. So if you have included any of these reasons, that's all you need. My passage says, I know ducks and geese like water. First, the passage tells me they swim in lakes. Second, it says sometimes they put their heads under the water to grab plants. Last, the photograph shows me ducks and geese swimming in the water. Those are things that I took directly from the text. Now I'm going to add my own thinking, my inferencing. What do I know and what have I come to the conclusion in my own thinking? I'm thinking that if ducks and geese did not like water, they would stay away from it. Those are the reasons I know that ducks and geese like water. Remember to use the words from the text and the illustrations and what you already know and what you can put those two things together to come up with a conclusion when you are making an inference. Use those context clues. Have fun readers.